This is the Old West, Element 3, Part 1, about how white settlement affected Native American cultural history. And as you can see here, Native American cultural history prior to white settlement spread all over the country in various areas. People living on the land around them and not really knowing anything else. And that's the biggest thing to remember about the cultural basics of Native American history. They relied on the physical environment around them for food, for clothes, for shelter, etc., etc. And depending on where you lived, you were raised a certain way. There were no PowerPoints or, or books necessarily to tell you how Native Americans in modern-day Washington State lived if you had grown up in modern-day Florida. You had, if you lived there out in the plains, for example, in this picture here, you were used to having buffalo and buffalo hides and a lack of wood and needing to move somewhere else in the wintertime. But if you lived in southern Florida, this was your life, building your homes and centering your culture about around the swamps of the Everglades, uh, hunting for alligator or setting up your, your, uh, your homes with the trees or types of trees that were there, knowing the local roots and berries and things you could use for food and for medicine. It was different across the country for every Native American tribe, and for centuries they had lived knowing how to live in their one particular spot. Men in these societies typically hunted and fished. Uh, they typically gathered some and cleared fields for planting. Women usually tended to the crops and had substantial authority and power, a lot more than you might imagine in a situation like this. The scene in this picture here is most likely something from southern Florida or, or uh, maybe even going along the Gulf, Gulf Coast toward Louisiana. You can see them dragging an alligator up on shore here and carrying a boar and living in a, a swampy, marshy region. But when you're living there for centuries, you're accustomed to that and you know how to do it. A major part of Native American culture was spiritualism, the idea that all living things had a spirit and are brothers in harmony. Uh, the trees, they, it, was a, it was a very environmental type of thinking. Uh, the trees had a spirit. Uh, the wind had a spirit. The animals had a spirit. You had a spirit. And so you were uh, very in tune with the environment around you. The sky was the great father of all living things. And the earth was the great mother of all living things, humans, animals, the living environment, uh, so on and so forth. It was customary in hunting to show respect for your quote-unquote spiritual brother, in other words the animal, for sacrificing itself so that you might survive. It's a very wonderful romantic concept when you think about it. Vision quests were a big part of Native American culture, specifically in Western tribes, to determine your destiny in life. Uh, when you reached a certain age, you were sent off on your own for a time being, uh, usually with a lack of water, a lack of food, and often some herbs like peyote that could be created to induce uh, hallucinations. And it was during this vision quest that Native Americans were often renamed. Uh, their, their new name would come from what they saw in their vision. For example, Crazy Horse was called that because when he did his vision quest, he saw a series of horses acting sporadically and acting in strange ways. When he came back and told that to the mentors, uh, he was dubbed Crazy Horse. Now, not all names came from a vision quest. Uh, Sitting Bull was named that for his bravery in battle. Uh, as his opponents were firing arrows or maybe even bullets, uh, it was, he was recognized for sitting down in the middle of the battlefield and not leaving, holding ground so that his tribe would not lose ground. Uh, that was not based on a vision quest, and as a result, people started to call him Sitting Bull. But those weren't necessarily the things that eventually brought Native Americans into conflict with uh, the Wasichus or the Whites. Uh, what did bring them into conflict was that Native Americans in their culture believed in the freedom to roam as needed for the Great Mother to provide for them. Uh, they had no concept of property or map lines that would dictate ownership saying, this is mine and that's yours. Their idea is that the earth provides for all, and there's plenty there for everyone, and that it's not owned by anybody. Native Americans believed that you could go where you needed to go to get the things that you needed to have because... 
there was no such thing as mine or yours. The earth provided for everyone. By the arrival of Columbus in 1492, there were approximately 54 million Native Americans populating South America and another 4 million who populated North America, a stretch of 15,000 miles. They were split into countless tribes with over 2,000 languages and cultures, and there's no way in this presentation here that we're going to do justice to all of them. It's almost bad to try to talk about Native American history as such a generalization when there are that many different languages and cultures, including that many lifestyles and religions. But we'll do the best that we can. Take a look here. You see the uh, scene at Machu Picchu, the remains of the Incas of Peru. The Mayans of Central America also built uh, glorious structures and large civilizations. And the most famous might be the Aztecs of Mexico, who built their city in the middle of a lake with causeways leading to and from it. This city that they built, of course, is now modern-day Mexico City, the capital of Mexico. Each one of these in South America created stunning civilizations, even without the wheel, horse, or oxen. They didn't have any of those things. And in North America, the mound builders of the Ohio Valley, here you see the serpent mound that's become very famous over the years, the Mississippian culture of the lower Midwest near Cahokia, and the Anasazi of the American Southwest all built incredible civilizations and structures. Maize, which could also be described as Indian corn, became a, a staple crop for the founding of native cultures on both continents. The cultivation of maize started about 5,000 BC in South America with the Aztecs, and about 3,000 years later in 2000 BC in North America with the Pueblos. It allowed nomadic hunters to settle and build civilizations, some large, some small. Native Americans also were the ones who created the three-sister farming system. Uh, the idea here was that you had a corn stalk, so you obviously had maize, and then beans would be growing on the corn stalks. Meanwhile, squash, pumpkins, and other types of gourds were growing at the base of the corn stalks, retaining moisture in the soil so that the corn could regrow again. It was the three sister farming system of corn, beans, and gourds that basically helped to make Native Americans stay alive and frankly gave them something to teach to European explorers later on. So those are just some of the cultural basics of Native American history. Again, you could do entire years on the history of Native American cultures and still not touch everything that you need to touch on. But hopefully we've given you a decent starter point to take a look at. Thanks for listening.